Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Morning, John. Hey, Art. Good to see. You. Good to see you. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Had a great weekend. What about you? Uh, good. I see you're not wearing a mask. I'm not. I've, uh, <laughs> you don't need a mask I've, on I've, Skype, I've, Art. Let actually, me remind you. No, actually, I've. Uh, uh, f funny you should ask. Uh, a good friend of ours, Gary Stone, uh, I, I guess took his uh, 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 single engine or twin engine uh, plane up over Corona, California, and sent some pictures back and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, he he has a great sense of humor. So he, I forgot how he led off, but I said, "But were you wearing a mask?" And he 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 responded in a funny way, and I said. Because remember, uh, you're so skilled at what you do that I know that you're capable of doing a north by northwest uh, activity, and that would, you know, I'm, I'm really worried about you six feet apart, <laughs> north by northwest being the, the Hitchcock. Sure, they're flying down. And, and but somebody else down. had also in the same thread written about uh, corona dusting. Well, so. <laughs> coronavirus, Corona, California, yeah. But my understanding was that um, he did practice safe uh, piloting, but he was not wearing a mask uh, <laughs> during the flight. Yeah. So I, I wanted to share a story with you. Uh, last week, um, a, a good number of our high school classmates got on a Zoom conference call with a mini reunion. Were they Were they wearing masks? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Otherwise, I would not have recognized them. Wow. Um, at any rate, a fascinating thing happened as we went around and sharing uh, experiences, who's living where and what are you doing with yourself. Uh, there were probably three or four guys who live in Florida or have a second home in Florida and are traveling back and forth between New York, where we all grew up, and Florida. And as a group, they didn't all have the exact same experience, but as a group, what came out of it is as they travel north from Florida to New York or coming south, they noticed, all of them noticed, that each state has a completely different setup uh, regarding masks, regarding the coronavirus, um, and that circumstances, they, it was like going from one country to another. All of a sudden, people were, everybody had masks on, nobody could uh, move on the sidewalk without a mask. Uh, you go uh, another uh, hour north and you're in territory where for some reason nobody's wearing a mask. And then you'd go into, you'd stop uh, for uh, lunch somewhere in another state and it was completely different. It was a mix and mm. certain regulations here and no regulations there. And uh, what struck me out of all of this is that um, it is different everywhere uh, that you know, yes, New York, as an example, is the, you know, the center fold for coronavirus deaths and all that other stuff. So maybe they need to be uh, battened down the hatches and have everybody wear masks and separation. But I think they said Virginia, and I'm not sure I remember the state, Virginia had no problems. You'd go in there and it was like there would never a coronavirus. Um, the point is that we have to be prepared as quote the company gets the, the country gets back to normal we have to be prepared for it to be different everywhere well uh, it's not going to be the same for all of us and uh they were surprised they surprised enough so that the four of them started sharing yeah when i stopped in uh, uh charleston it was like this and oh when i got to atlanta it was like that so you it know. looks like you might need a little break for uh, maybe a sip of water or to re-wet your throat uh, but I finish drinking that before I begin to speak, because otherwise you might just spit it out all over your screen, okay. and that's what you'll be doing for the afternoon is cleaning well, your Well, screen. let's hear it, Art, because yeah. I know we <laughs> disagree on so many subjects. Oh, boy, are we going to disagree here, okay? Because, okay. you know, I'm like I'm not like Mr. Nye, the science guy, but I'd probably uh, pay a little bit more attention or care a little bit more about uh, the science behind these things. And I think there should be... Uh, uh, probably a national, um, uh, 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 not direct, it may not be, a, like uh, Cuomo in New York keeps saying, he can't 
tell people what to do. We can only suggest it by giving them the facts. And, and the facts in New York for Governor Andy, if, if you've not seen his almost daily uh, uh, recitation of uh, cases going up and now coming down, is that masks do help. Uh, they don't necessarily help you from prevent you from getting it, but it help, helps you from spreading it. Okay, so why don't uh, disagree no, 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 with no, no, that? Where do we still disagree? Let's still go. Need, you're still in the gray. matter. Where do we disagree? You by not you a national so program here we, for masks. Here we here we go. You so, want everybody to be forced to wear a mask. I That's think that you're... everybody should wear a mask. Okay. That and and for the following reasons, because I care about you, John. Uh, and I know that you don't carry about you. I know that you have goats and, and, and chickens and things and you're not going to transmit to them. So it's not like you're uncaring. But when you go out in public, I don't know whether or not you wear a mask. I, I hope that you do when you go shopping and things like that. And quite frankly, here's what the issues are. The issues are that if we're out there and uh, they found that masks have helped the uh, first responders and the uh, hospital workers from having a low incidence of getting the coronavirus than the general population. And the big difference is their PPEs, primarily their masks, because you see a lot of them that have nothing more than just a mask. And I believe that that will help prevent the spread of things. And quite frankly, we're going to have a, probably a pretty good test in about two weeks between all the states that have begun to open up and you've watched on TV some it looks like half the people were wearing masks and the other half weren't irrespective of watching, social distancing. Watching on TV the, is a riot you're talking about? No, 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 no. That too, but before that uh, the uh, uh, the incidents where the whole people were meeting in a pool I think in the Ozarks. Oh, the sure. Story. People were covering beaches and on the news. They were covering beaches right. and they, but, but, people walking on the beach with and no people masks. going in yeah. bars and and raising their glass and just not having much distance between them at all. So I right. think we're going to get a pretty good idea in about a week and a half to two weeks uh, what not wearing masks because that's a primary difference uh, would be, and they have a pretty good idea of what areas had it or hadn't didn't have it. But to me, wearing a mask is a, it doesn't cost a lot. Okay. And it may just be that we are uncomfortable or something, but if it prevents somebody else from getting the disease or prevents right. you from getting the disease, then why not just do that for a couple of months until this stuff really gets under control? Because right now you may think it's under control. I don't. And by the way, yes, also uh, during all the rioting, you saw in some cities, uh, a lot of people were wearing masks and others they weren't. I'm particularly worried about the police uh, who, uh, for the most part, in most, uh, well, at least when I was watching, or at least in half of them, uh, they were in their riot gear, but they weren't wearing masks. So, And uh, people were yelling and screaming at them. And, and so their opportunity to get these droplets spewed at them and them absorbing them, I think, are pretty good. So it'll be an interesting... Unfortunately, an interesting experiment to see whether or not masks do help or don't help. Well, I don't think there's any way to prove it scientifically. Um, I agree with you. Masks do help. And I, as a person in the uh, most vulnerable group, you know, over, over whatever it is, over 60 and with underlying conditions and all that, um, thank you for uh, muting my muter. Muting your cough, yeah. Um, I, I agree that masks do help, and I would like it if everybody wore a mask um, because it is pretty simple, and it, quite frankly, it protects me and you and the people in the most vulnerable group, which are seniors. Uh, generally speaking, everybody over 60 is in the most vulnerable group, um, but I don't see the practicality of that um, in a society that is so pluralistic, I guess is the right word, uh, you're never going to get everybody to um, toe the line unless you crack down um, like Nazis. I, I don't know how else to describe it. That's how you would control the population. And um, 
you've got to be prepared for just what my friends, my high school friends were saying, and that is as you go to different places, they're going to have their own rules. Now, it's right now it's state by state, but the way they were talking about it, it seemed to be almost city by city. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and let's face it, um, my daughter was telling me that they went to the beach in San Diego uh, last week, and um, they couldn't go in the water. They could walk along the sand, but they could not go in the water. Uh, there's probably a reason for that, but it, it sure escapes me. It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't sit in the sand. You couldn't. Why you couldn't sit and be six feet or ten feet apart escapes me as well. I think part of what we're dealing with is that the rules, the rules are always going to be a step behind. You know, they're gonna, not going to want to take off the masks until oh, we're sure there are nobody dying. Uh, so the man, the, the rules are always a step behind as, of necessity, and the rules always seem arbitrary to people like me, at least, who don't understand the science behind it. Uh, uh, why you can go to the beach and you can walk, but you can't sit, you can't go in the water. Wait a minute. And meanwhile, on the boardwalk, people are lined up in restaurants, uh, sitting in restaurants, uh, granted they're open air, but it, it all seems crazy. And when you try to dictate from the top down, it never works. Except, um, except I will, I I will point out a, an example where it seems to have worked, in the and and they're being very careful in how they reopen, uh, uh, at least prior to the, uh, the the riots, is in New York, where other than New York City, which still has a, a too high an incidence, I guess is that the trend was going down in, in uh, six or eight upstate regions and they began to open up and it's still, it's only about a week or two old now, so we'll see what that happens. But to me, uh, uh, it, it, it's part of it. I agree with you that there, there's so much inconsistency uh, throughout the states, but it looks like the only one that has done it in a consistent way has been in... Uh, New York and maybe a neighboring state uh, here or there. But the bottom line is that somewhere along the line, some of these things are going to show that they work. Some are going to show that they don't work. And I would no sooner say that you could have uh, drive a car on, on the open roads without a driver's license. Certainly it's restrictive. And certainly there are probably 50... Uh, separate sets of rules. So there's even a separate sets of rules, I think, in some cases on and what drunk driving uh, levels are. But at least there are rules for that, and we give up some of our rights to just drive without a license in order to protect others as well as ourselves. So, you know, where's the mix? I think probably the masks do a lot more good than harm, and that that's one of the things that we should quite frankly if i see somebody not wearing a mask i know it's their right but quite frankly uh i don't it changes my opinion of what harm would it be for them to do something that might protect me uh when i go outside i uh, you know unless i'm right in the front of my house or driving in my car you know, i i've gone off to a store here and there i always put on a mask and quite frankly the stores that I've gone to, Smart and Final, Costco, it's a requirement. You don't have a mask. Right. You're not in well, there. Well, I, I do the same thing, but I want to argue with you about your point about New York. I think that point that you bring up proves my case, and that is that New York did not or could not maintain the one-size-fits-all ruling from the top down. New York is a big state. And New York City is the problem, not Schenectady, not Albany, not Buffalo. And so what Governor Cuomo had to do, and I don't know whether he wanted to or not, but what he had to do um, is he had to take, go county by county and say, look, over here in western New York, we don't have a problem. We're going to open them up phase one today. Uh, eastern, uh, you know, Albany, we're going to open up. They can go to phase two. But New York City, you got to stay locked down no opening up because that's where the problems are. That's, I think that's reasonable. I think that's what's happening all along the East Coast that my, my high school friends commented on. I think it's probably happening all around the country. 
we don't hear of any problems. I'm not sure they don't have any problems, but we don't hear of any from Iowa, Nebraska, uh, you know, places like that. Every we have 50 states. They are geographically geographically different. The the demographics are different. The attitudes are different. Um, and I think so far we've taken a reasonable attitude, which is where there's a problem, let's do something about it. So here, here's my but here's my I don't thought. agree with I don't agree with your one size fits all. Everybody should wear a mask. Do I agree with it that they should? Yes, but I, you can't you can't dictate that. So I think I think that uh, in New York, what he did was he he fully admitted from day one that here are the facts. This is how it spreads. This is why we want you to be wearing a mask. And he essentially got voluntary compliance. But that's because of his leadership of him getting out there and giving people facts and telling them, here's how it's going in this area, this area, this area. It got better. But, but normally uh, we might end, if we remember, besides plugging, go to uh, YouTube Celebrating Act 2 and subscribe. <laughs> we won't do that today. Uh, again, uh, and we might uh, make that the full uh, request of uh, so uh, to our audience. Tell us what you think, although we'd love to hear from you. But this is what we should do, John. Uh, Johns Hopkins, and and you 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 remember that because it it's got your namesake in it. Probably has the most well-respected set of numbers that they provide on every single region. I don't know whether you've been there, but you could just Google Johns Hopkins and coronavirus. They have the most detailed records state by state. And uh, I, I suspect that uh, areas uh, that have opened too quickly, uh, that weren't showing a downward trend for a couple of weeks, uh, will, and we'll find out in a couple of weeks, uh, whether or not this massive protesting a lot of people without masks and angry spewing of, uh, of, of verbiage in front of other people, uh, obviously causing germs to be spread around, uh, will have an effect. So we'll find out in a couple of weeks. But we, we, we like each other. I don't think we would. Uh, I'd love to meet you in a parking lot someplace. <laughs> I'd love to meet you in a parking lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, tailgate and uh, have a conversation with us both wearing masks. Uh, and I think we would do that. And I would urge our uh, listeners also, when you go out in the public, wear a mask. It'll give you some degree of protection, uh, but it's really to protect other people. So I would urge people to do that can order them to do that and uh, how do you feel about that john I, I happen to agree with you 100 percent. what's wrong with us today, particularly, john? What particularly is wrong the with last us? part where you said can't order them to do that correct okay <laughs> uh, say goodbye art okay but you could order a corned beef on rye you should be able to do that Oh yeah, and then the question is, mayonnaise or mustard? Oh, don't not, even, no, don't, don't even go don't there. Even I, go know, there. I know, don't I know, I know. Okay, you probably put ketchup on your hot dogs. Oh, <laughs> no, not quite. Okay, that's right. We're both from New York. Yeah, and we fold our pizza, right? I, I yeah, we yeah. we have a lot more in common than we don't. Well, in Chicago, you can't fold a pizza because it's thick crust. I, okay, yeah. so I just want to clarify. Okay, I think that we probably have. I don't want to let our, you get away with anything today. Once I, once again, we have overstayed our welcome by certainly a couple of minutes. So, oh, uh, yeah. So anyway, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, thank you, John, for uh, being my partner. I enjoy it, and I look forward to seeing you again someday, perhaps even without we're, a mask. We're going to end, Art, we're going to end with a hug. Say goodbye. Oh, and how, how, how do we do this? Uh, this the virtual hug. The virtual hug here. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Okay. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.